Hey guys, Jake here, and today I want to talk about something that I've seen come up in a lot of discussion lately, and that is the idea that Forza Horizon 5 is, well, in quotes, dead. I've seen dead referred to in many different things. It could mean that a game stopped getting supported, it could mean that less people are playing the game than before, or it could mean that there's zero player base at all. And in this case, it's the second one. Less people are playing it than before. And a lot of people are attributing it to issues with the game, but I think that's only part of the story. I think half of it is problems with the game, but I think half of it is also players' expectations. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have a high expectation for a game or that you shouldn't think a game is going to be good or whatever, but this is a specific case. So first, I want to wind it back a little bit to before June of 2021. In the year prior, personally, I saw that a lot of people were getting sick of Forza Horizon 4, and I didn't think that they were going to make a new game anytime soon. Typically, the cycle was that Forza Motorsport release and then Forza Horizon released, with the new Forza Motorsport redoing a lot of the Forza Tech engine and building a lot of things from the ground up, I thought that that game was going to release first and then a big new Horizon 5 was going to release afterward. But oh boy, was I wrong. Obviously, as Forza Horizon 5 was revealed at Xbox's E3 showcase last year. Y you can see I had quite a bit of hype in that trailer, and that was because I really didn't think we were going to be getting anything, and I didn't think we were going to get something that looked like a big shift in terms of the map and environment from Horizon 4. Simply a new Forza Horizon game existing, I think, excited a lot of people, including myself, because I just didn't think it was going to happen, and I thought Horizon 4 was going to get updates for many more years, until a Horizon 5 could be made with the improvements that the new Forza Motorsport is going to be making to the Forza Tech engine. And some of those improvements are there. I can see some bits of the lighting from that engine trailer in Horizon 5. But Horizon 5 was not the big overhaul game that I thought was going to happen after the release of the new Forza Motorsport. And it ended up being cross-gen. And of course, leading up to the game, there was excitement, especially from a lot of players who had only played Forza Horizon 4 and were used to that for a few years, so this was their first chance at seeing a new Horizon game for them. The game was released in November of 2021 and was met to extreme critical acclaim by critics. A lot of players were having fun with it, and the popularity of the game absolutely blew up to over 10 million players, probably due to Xbox Game Pass. And the game was absolutely not a broken mess. But there were more bugs than usual for a Forza title. Even after some of the updates were released, there were some problems, I think specifically on the Series X where you couldn't leave your garage. But the main thing is that the online component of the game had a lot of problems for the first month and a half after release. Not being able to connect the convoys, not being able to see other people in the lobby. I could see you, I could see you. I could see you. I could see you now. Yeah, I'm coming towards you right now. I'm gonna, wait, stay there, I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you. Now it's flipped. Traffic cars not loading in online lobbies, etc. Again, you could always disconnect from the online portion of the game, play solo, and it would work fine. But this was irritating to a lot of people. I think that did taint people's view of the game at first, but they did get fixed. But eventually after those fixes, I'd say probably about a month after the fixes, I saw a lot of complaints come up with the game. And they all sort of seemed to revolve around that the game got boring quickly. And since a lot of people are finding the game to get boring quickly and less people are playing it, the game is now declared dead by plenty of people. I don't think this is entirely a problem on the game itself though. I think this is actually a result of two things. The second one is the game itself, I'm going to get to that. But I think the first thing actually is player expectations. With the popularity of live service games today, people for some reason expect a game to entertain them for hundreds or even thousands of hours on end without any kind of break it seems. I think no matter how much content a game has, you're going to get bored of it eventually. And people with Horizon 5, and as with most other popular games, were probably playing it a bunch at release, and when you play a game a ton over several weeks or a couple of months, to get burnt out of it eventually and that is just something that happens with every single game i don't think it's necessarily something that should be put on forza horizon 5. i feel like a lot of people are associating this thing that can happen with any game to be a forza horizon 5 specific issue and i feel like this expectation i think is actually in some ways making games worse because if you saw dying light 2's marketing campaign their whole push to get people to play the game was that the 100 percent completion rate took over 500 hours to get to it's almost like people want to play these games not because they enjoy them but because they can spend time on them maybe i'm wrong here if you 
don't agree with me with that, let me know. But that is only one part of the story. There are many valid reasons I think that people are getting bored of Forza Horizon 5. Now, as someone who's been following the Forza Horizon series since its inception, I've always seen a wave of complaints come out around this time of the game, saying that the game is too similar to the previous one. I remember it happening with Horizon 3, saying it's too similar to 2. I remember it happening with 4, saying it's too similar to 3. And now it's happening with Forza Horizon 5, saying it's too similar to 4. These complaints always come up, and they're usually always around the same time. And I think this time specifically is that there's so many new players from Forza Horizon 4, since 4 blew up and made the series bigger than it ever has been before, as well as trying to be more casual and accessible to a wider range of people, a lot of people don't know about the lack of change in formula in the Horizon series. Every Horizon game, after 1, has had the same exact formula. Not that that formula hasn't changed or improved, Personally, I think there's major changes in most of the Horizon games, but I get why a lot of people wouldn't see the same way as I do. I find Horizon 3 to be a big enough of a change from 2 because the physics are so much better. Your car doesn't roll over when taking big jumps anymore. In Horizon 2, that would happen kind of often. And speaking of the off-road experience, Horizon 3 features a lot more cars that are actually built for off-roading. Horizon 2 more often than not encouraged you to just off-road your current car, off-road a supercar, off-road whatever. In Horizon 3, I feel like the off-roading experience is much more focused, and I think that's one thing that made it a lot better than Horizon 2. And the blueprints mean you can actually re play races in the way you want. You don't have to play a championship in order to race with one specific car one time. I find Horizon 4 to be a big enough of a change from 3 because of the seasons and the way the live service playlist worked. And as well as that, the custom route editor added a lot of replayability for me. As well as the Eliminator if we're talking post-launch content. A Horizon 5 I don't feel like is as big of a change, but the new Event Lab system, even if it's a little bit rough, does add a lot of replayability to the game for making your own content. But a lot of people really don't feel like that's enough. Forza Horizon, after each game, just doesn't change as much as many other franchises do. Ever since Horizon 2, Playground has very much taken a backseat to change because the series has been working out so well for them, why change anything? And clearly, it's working because every single time the critics will give it a higher review score than it had before. And each new Horizon title is more popular than the last one, so clearly, they don't really need to change anything if they're looking at it from that point of view. But since a lot of new players have come from Forza Horizon 4, they don't know about the lack of change in each game, and they expect more change in a new game since it's a new game. And it doesn't help that a lot of new Forza Horizon players are on PC and can't play the previous titles at all. Since Horizon 1 and 2 were never on PC, Horizon 1 isn't playable via emulation yet, Horizon 3 is delisted, and Horizon 4 is probably going to get delisted this year as well. So since a lot of new players can't experience what the whole franchise had to offer, they don't know how much change took place between each game. And in addition to the game being similar to Horizon 4, that comes with the issues Forza Horizon 4 had. Horizon 5, while I think it is a good game and I've had a lot of fun with it, it suffers from a lot of the same issues Horizon 4 had for me. Examples being too many wheel spins, a bloated car garage, way too much effort and time to get into any online race, and much more. Now, don't get me wrong, plenty of things have been improved, like much better wheel support, a much more varied map, and much better car sounds, which are probably some of the best I've heard in any racing game. But one giant element the game does take from Forza Horizon 4 is a very similar festival playlist, which is a pro and a con. And I think this is a huge reason why people are not playing the game. So I noticed around the time when the Toyota Celica was being released in Horizon 5, a lot of people were complaining about the game. And honestly, I felt a similar way during that week's playlist. For some reason, it just felt like a complete drag to get through for a car that was in Forza Motorsport 4 with a similar model from Forza Motorsport 4. By the way, fun fact, did you know that Playground Games said that every car in the car pass is going to be new to Forza? Well, there's the 911 Sport Classic, which was recently released, and that car was in, wait for it, Forza Motorsport 4, and only Forza Motorsport 4, so apparently, Forza Motorsport, due to uh, delisting 
the old game is not being on PC, and popularity of Horizon, the series has become so irrelevant that Playground themselves forgot about Forza Motorsport. Well, sort of. They changed their idea after this to that, the, that every new car in the car pass is going to be new to Horizon. So, uh, they kind of just completely changed the narrative after they said that first thing. Kind of strange. But this recycling of cars has made a lot of people sick of Forza. Now, this isn't the first time Forza has done this. This has always happened with Forza, even back to Forza Horizon 1. A lot of popular cars were not present in the base game and were resold as DLC. Even the Nissan 240SX. Now, some things need to be reworked for Horizon 1, like the pop-up headlights and the headlights actually turning on at all, etc. But that had a similar issue as Forza Motorsport 5. I think it was a bit more forgiven though because Horizon was a spin-off title. It was a new thing. So it wasn't seen to replace Forza Motorsport 4. But if you really do trace it back that far, Forza has been recycling and reselling cars for the longest time. One of my favorite or least favorite examples of this is how the Gallardo Spider was a DLC car in Forza Horizon 1. And it was also a DLC car in Forza Horizon 4. Can you get that? And of course, no game critic has once ever mentioned or complained about this ever before, so I don't know if we're going to get it fixed. Sometimes I think Playground only listens to critics, but then again, they did fix the car sounds, which I don't think any of the critics complained about, so maybe I'm wrong. Hold it right there. Now, this is actually a bit of an ironic statement coming from myself, considering that I made a video about what Forza Horizon 4's blueprint system needed, and it seems like Playground had listened to nearly every single complaint I had in that video. Even the complaints that weren't very popular. You can make the argument that some of the things they implemented were things that people were asking for. But there were some things in there that I never really saw from anyone else, such as the number of AI being adjusted. And that was a thing that was implemented to Horizon 5's event lab. So I think they could have very well watched my video and completely listened and added nearly everything I wanted. So... I don't think it's really true that Playground just listens to critics. But that doesn't make them completely innocent because there are plenty of other issues in the game that they seem to be kind of asleep. But I think the biggest problem with the way Forza does live service in the festival playlist is not just recycling cars, but the aspect of FOMO, or fear of missing out, which a lot of live service games do, but I think it drags down the game a lot. And this is a very simple explanation as to why. Lately, the Neo EP9, the uh, Chinese hypercar, was released in Forza Horizon 5, and I thought it was cool, I wanted to get it. But a couple days ago, I was just going on my PC, and I wanted to play Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. And as I was about to boot the game up, I remembered, oh, shoot, there's the Neo EP9 in Horizon 5. I want to go grab that. I want to go grab that car I want that's going to be available for a limited time. I didn't want to play the game. It's not that I didn't want to play the game, but I didn't initially think of playing the game because I wanted to play the game. I thought of playing the game because there was a limited time card I had to get within a certain period of time if I ever wanted it. And that's the problem. You're making people go on this game for a limited time item. Not because they want to play the game, but because they have to if they want this thing. Grinch of Sport had free updates for about two years. And in those years, we got completely free cars, completely free tracks, nothing of charge except the Lewis Hamilton challenges, but that wasn't content in terms of cars and tracks, just a few extra time trials. But in terms of the big content that people wanted was all completely free and all of the cars were simply added to the dealership, which you could buy for in-game credits. I think it makes people come back to the game in a much more positive light that, oh, I can't wait to go drive this car and get, get some credits, go buy it, do whatever I want with it. Meanwhile, on Forza, I feel like it's not because they want the car, but because they feel like they have to get the car. Does that make sense? And I feel like putting cars behind this weekly timed wall is making a lot more disdain for the game than people might think. And I just don't think that's the really greatest way to do this. Now, if Forza was to do the same thing and put all the cars in the dealer, they would have a problem. You know why? Because everyone has too much money and putting the cars in the dealer would mean that people could just go buy all the cars and drive them pretty much immediately. They wouldn't have to save up anything. Granted, in GT Sport, if you have a bunch of money saved up, you could have done this. 
but it's not realistic at all for that game. In Forza Horizon 5, everyone has too many credits, and for some reason they want people coming back every single week to play the game. Not because they want to, but because they have to, if they want a certain car. And when some of these cars aren't even just returns from old Forza Motorsport Horizon games, or aren't new to Forza completely, but when they were in Forza Horizon 4's car dealership and are simply locked off because they are now, I think is going to create some more negative feeling toward the festival playlist and how they're doing live service in this game and trying to get people to come back to it. But combine that with the lack of change, combine that with people having expectations of, of a game having to entertain them for hundreds of thousands of hours on, a, on, on end, it's going to make people get burnt out of the game a bit. And that is why I think Forza Horizon 5 is considered dead by some. Anyways, let me know what you thought of the video. Do you agree with my points? Do you disagree with my points? What do you think of the festival playlist and how they've recycled cars? How could they necessarily do the festival playlist in the live service system better that eliminates a fear of missing out? Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later.